If you've heard of the concept of dark matter, you most likely have also heard of the concept of MOND, Modified Newtonian Dynamics. The concept that essentially tries to replace the idea of dark matter by tweaking the Newtonian formula for gravity. And though for many years, MOND actually picked up a lot of pace and was able to explain certain phenomena out there, not requiring any dark matter and even explaining certain propositions about the expansion of the universe, most scientists or most cosmologists today do not believe it's correct for various reasons. But this recent paper really puts Mond in a difficult situation, a situation that's going to be almost impossible to resolve. Maybe just maybe, Mond is not really correct after all, at least for the observations right here in the Milky Way. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss the mystery of dark matter once again, but specifically focus on this new paper and I guess a couple of new papers that almost definitively prove Mond incorrect. Although here, a super important side note. They also suggest that some of the modern theories, including the Lambda CDM model that does include dark matter and dark energy, does not seem to explain everything either. In other words, none of the models explain anything. And so let's discuss this in more detail, but let's actually, I guess, briefly start with the problem at hand. So a few decades back, as the scientists started measuring the rotation of stars in various galaxies, they realized that the actual curve, the galactic curve, does not behave as they predicted. For example, just like in the solar system, we expect stars on the outskirts to move around much slower. Yet they don't. In most galaxies out there, the overall shape of the galactic curve is relatively flat. Stars move at relatively similar velocities across the entire galaxy. And the initial explanation was that maybe there's actually some extra mass in the galaxy that we don't really know about. The so-called invisible mass or dark mass, dark matter. But then additional discoveries started to be made from other regions in the universe. For example, galactic clusters that seem to possess way too much mass on the inside, even resulting in extremely powerful gravitational lensing effects that would not be explained otherwise unless there was some extra invisible mass somewhere inside this galaxy or inside a galactic cluster. And a few more discoveries from here and there basically resulted with the proposition that it must have been some kind of a invisible dark matter possibly produced by some kind of a particle. But it's been decades now, and no particle has been discovered so far. Then, in the 80s, an Israeli scientist proposed that, okay, maybe if we actually rework the formula for gravity just a little bit, and also introduce a few more phenomena, you can suddenly explain a lot of the observations from galaxies really well. With this idea known as modified Newtonian dynamics, or MOND, picking up pace pretty quickly, even potentially explaining a lot of other phenomena as well. Not all phenomena, like for example, it still struggles with a lot of galactic clusters, and quite a few other things as well, but it did explain certain dwarf galaxies, it also explained certain global clusters, and orbits of various galaxies around one another. But it also made some predictions that actually ended up being completely incorrect. And one of the predictions was disproven back in 2017. This was actually in regards to gravitational waves, and specifically that the gravitational waves are going to be moving at different speed from electromagnetic light, resulting from the reworking of this Newtonian formula for gravity. But turns out that gravity and electromagnetic light do move at exactly the same velocity. This was proven during the detection of the first ever kilonova produced by colliding neutron stars. But not everyone was faced by this, and some studies even tried to explain this by introducing a few additional phenomena into MOND. But at this point, a lot of scientists have also kind of lost interest, mostly because suddenly MOND needed new propositions, additional patching, additional upgrades, in order to suddenly explain these new observations. But that was back in 2017, we kind of moved on since then. But one of the bigger stories happened in 2023. It was actually from several different scientists, from several different teams, using relatively similar data and trying to prove MOND once again by using one of the predictions. But this time a prediction that's technically only applicable to MOND and does not require dark matter at all. It involves binary stars. Although to be more exact, wide binaries. Stars that are in orbit, but actually have a huge distance between them. Anywhere from 2 to maybe 10,000 astronomical units, with a single orbit taking anywhere from 100,000 to 1 million years. And we obviously know these stars exist, we've seen them many times, and it just so happens that we have a perfect telescope to observe all of this that's been collecting data for several years now. Gaia Telescope, the ESA's telescope that's about to complete its fourth data release, presenting us with even more data. 
And so it just so happens that one of the main propositions in MOND suggests we should see a dramatic deviation from orbit, or velocity of orbit, for quite a lot of these white binaries based on the reworked Newtonian formula compared to typical Newtonian law. And this cannot be due to dark matter because here nobody predicts dark matter to exist and it cannot attach itself to stars and influence anything. But if we actually see various white binaries that seem to orbit approximately 20% faster than they should orbit, in that case this is almost a definitive proof that MOND is correct and Newtonian physics or Newtonian gravitational law is not. In other words, these white binaries have always been a kind of a definitive test for the modified Newtonian dynamics. And intriguingly, one of the main scientists studying all of this and one of the main proponents for MOND is this wonderful person, Indranil Banik. Pretty much all of his papers so far have been on various proofs or different types of evidence for why MOND is most likely correct and for why it seems to make the most sense. You can go through his studies in the link in the description. Now why am I bringing him up? Well, because he was the first author for one of the biggest papers on MOND using the Gaia Telescope catalog that was released not so long ago. An enormous and super comprehensive study that sort of covers everything, tries to explain everything, covers some details from previous papers by other authors, but I guess most importantly, super definitively determines that MOND is not correct. And I mean, that's his whole career right there. He's one of the main scientists. And that, of course, is the beauty of science. Even though as a main proponent, he would love to believe that MOND is the correct theory, the data and the analysis suggests pretty much otherwise. And so let's briefly go through this paper and why it's so important. So in a previous video that you can find in the description, we've briefly discussed several papers that basically produce contradictory results. Two papers produced results suggesting that white binaries indeed show that MOND seems to be correct, but one paper very definitively showed otherwise. And so for this study, the scientists conducted a kind of a blind statistical test by trying to go through a lot of data collected by Gaia, only picking perfect candidates or basically perfect binaries that could be used for analysis. In this case, this involved approximately 8,600 stars and then looking at their velocities in order to see what results they get. And they got a result with 19 sigma confidence, a statistical significance that's almost impossible to argue with. But more importantly, they had a 16 sigma confidence that MOND was incorrect, as in it cannot be a possible answer for any observations in these white binaries. Here this graph essentially shows us that the observations seem to align directly with predictions from Newtonian gravity. Moreover, they then took results from other papers, the ones that show that MOND is probably correct, and actually found the reasons why this conclusion was reached. It was a kind of a data contamination. Certain stars or certain binaries just didn't really make sense to be in that data. And so once the data was cleared up, once again MOND was no longer needed. And so both of the previous studies that were conducted independently seemed to suffer from the same problem. They basically used a lot of binaries that were either too far away or potentially with a somewhat difficult orientation where it's kind of difficult to determine their velocity, which resulted in a potentially incorrect analysis. Once the data was cleared up, all of the results suddenly lined up with Newtonian gravity prevailing. And so what's the main conclusion from the paper? Well, it's really in regards to small scales for now. It looks like when it comes to stars or smaller objects, MOND just does not work. On anything inside the galaxy, in various binary systems, various nebula, inside galactic arms and so on, modified gravity seems to not exist. Here Newton was correct, his law still stands. But when it comes to some galactic observations and various galactic dynamics, some things still make sense and so it doesn't really have to be cancelled yet. As a matter of fact, one of the more recent papers by Banach and his team specifically focused on various cosmological structures and how MOND still explains some of the structures and some of the formations slightly better than modern theories involving dark matter. Which basically means that cosmologists now are back in an even more difficult situation. Because MOND seems to not work inside galaxies for some unknown reason and dark matter particles have not been discovered and also potentially don't really explain everything either. And so basically we need some kind of a modified, modified Newtonian dynamics. M -m mond I think. Although one more important tidbit. The study also concludes that Einsteinian or dark matter models also do not explain the observations from these binaries very well either. So here we're possibly back to not exactly knowing what's going on with the universe and what's causing this unusual dark matter phenomenon if it's not a particle and if it's not modified gravity. Both models seem to be incomplete 
and require some kind of a reworking. Intriguingly, just a few months prior, Bannock and his team also published a paper about Fornax cluster. And here, by looking at various small dwarf galaxies, they actually showed the opposite. Mond explains things better than any dark matter model known today. And so there's definitely something weird going on, and at the moment, I don't think anyone knows what it is. I mean, in one of the previous videos, we considered the idea of maybe dark matter being some kind of a tiny quantum particle, or what's known as the fuzzy dark matter. You can learn more about this in the video in the description. But at the moment, there's just no conclusive evidence for anything. But there are definitely some other explanations from other sciences that are just not as accepted. For example, there's another somewhat similar proposition known as MOG or modified gravity, proposed by John Moffat, and his recent paper seems to claim that his proposition even explains the unusual white binary observations. And so we'll probably talk more about this in one of the future videos, because it obviously deserves its own video, but at least for now, we're going to assume that Mond is not super correct about everything and possibly most things. And we're also going to assume that we're back to not knowing what exactly causes the effects from dark matter. We'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, check out some of the previous videos in the description, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.